Hi, this is um, Pixie Lamp put another video. Um, I've seen something tonight that looks like um, possibly UFO. Um, it's nothing, nothing major, basically. When you have these nights and um, they seem to be fairly blocked out, you can hardly see many stars. They're sometimes the best nights to look for a certain activity because um, near objects will light up more or seem to stand out. Now. I saw something um, earlier on, it did seem a bit sort of um, strange, only sort of for, for a small, it seems like a, for about a few seconds um, I just looked up something, it looked like a star, but it kind of pulsated and then disappeared, so I thought that was very strange, and it's usually then just a few seconds of looking at something and then it's gone. Um, so I, I've been tonight to see a, to see a client, and... Um, Basically, when I was with the client, he was saying, "Oh, is that the motorway? I can sense some sort of low, low hum." And I thought, oh, "Here we go." And we joked about what it could be. Um, and he he brought up the, about the aliens, but I think that's because he, he knows me, so he just sort of like joke them, joke about. Now, I I obviously um, have a an interest and in, and basically believe that there's something out there, but I'm also not in denial that maybe uh, most of the stuff you see about ninety percent of it or more, maybe it's um. Is 95% is 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 unlikely to be actually that is something completely different, um, but I'm willing to sort of put things under scrutiny to have a look at that. I thought that was quite interesting, and also when I where I am at the moment, I was just checking the stars and looking for any sort of an abnormality anomalies um, anomalies anomalies out there. Um, I did notice these sort of small lights that would sort of. Um, the shape of a triangle. They're fairly nice, close to where my car is at the moment, um, but they're very small s stars. The other thing is get get used to star maps, so I can possibly look at different star maps, and then I can rule things out. I think that's that's probably the safest way of doing it. When you've got a starless night, you're likely to see, like I say, different things that are nearer to Earth, so you can maybe pick out them, and then you can scrutinise them. Or um, I mean, it's nice when you've got a clear, nice clear, clear night, but it's just so much out there that um, it's possibly could blow your mind. I mean, it'd be nice at some point to have um, night vision um, goggles. Someone saying if you look at look at them at the actual sky because they, they um, amplify the infrared um, spectrum that you can um, you can basically and uh, pick out the stars. There's more stars out there you can see with a so that'd be interesting to see, and also the, the impact of things like the chemtrails. People going about chemtrails blocking out the sun and stuff, that's, and, and reducing daylight. Um, but also at night, sort of blocking out the stars, and you can't see. But I'm sure they wouldn't block out the infrared. So that'd be interesting to put them on, see if you can see through the veil. Basically, um, there's also something to be aware of as well. If, um, that light carries data. So you see flickering stars, and I might say for lots of different reasons, but it also carries that information that they're sent, they're broadcasting out. Uh, so stargazing is, is not a bad thing to do. And if you're on, on sort of the path of ascension, is that you can, even though the sun's been reduced, just in the morning, just look towards it and just close your eyes and let your pineal do the work. Um, and then just allow that that sort of warm energy to hit your head, your forehead, or um, just, just allow yourself to be sort of focused, or just look looking through your eyelids at it, basically like that. Um, you don't injure your eyes, there are certain light spectrum. It doesn't, to be honest, I don't think it injure your eyes, but what it might do is make them quite veiny. It's, because um, basically the uh, blood capillaries and um, blood vessels sort of end up pumping up, uh, and to make your eyes more sensitive. So, because you're working them differently, so you're uh, putting a sort of at some risk of some basic injury just by overexposure, but I don't think you're going to have any things that's going to be sort of too serious. I've looked at the sun f for a long, long period. I mean, it made my eyes slightly more veiny, and so that's why I stopped it because I thought well, I don't want to really do that because it's irreversible once you do that. And um, we have sensitive eyes anyway as humans. We're more adapted to sort of. Um, uh, looking at sort of uh, darker, more, more aquatic actually, our eyes. Even though we can't see that great underwater, I think that's probably some of our genetics. So our eyes are very good at um, predicting distance, and so you can just, for sort of very frame things. Um, uh, 
and accuracy of that kind. So this, there's a sensitivity to our eyes um, for them kind of use. So um, so yeah, that's I think that's one of the main sort of interests tonight was just sort of seeing some sort of UFO activity and wanting to mention about some sort of stuff. And I want to say UFO, it's just that I said unidentified to me. I mean, I do see some stuff that's out there, and I can sort of say, well, that's likely to be a plane. Um, if you see something and then it's like half an hour later or an hour later and you come back and you see it and it's, it's actually still there, you, it, make, it makes you question a bit more what you're looking at. Um, a bit like tonight, I was looking at things, I was thinking, oh, it's, probably, it's probably Venus or one of our planets. But the um, looking at the actual light of it, it's more in the yellow, sort of a more of um orangey type spectrum or ready, ready colours. So there's there's lots of stuff out there, just 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 mind blown basically. Um, so I just suggest you know keep your mind open. I think it's interesting. More mention about the client and they sort of you notice know, some humming because I wasn't really picking up on it, but he was. So I don't know what's going to happen. Um, happen to him at some point. And there's also the other concern is if you have, if you're an experiencer, that you might be followed around by certain things like you're tagged. And if you interact with certain clients, um, or well, in my work, I do vulnerable people. They 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 may have medical um, or neurological disorders in some way. And um, so basically, they are um, in a diversity. They fall in that remit of being um, different and sort of. Than, than maybe a general populace, and as a result, they could become specimens if something becomes aware of them and, and sort of starts doing checks on them. I mean, I did have a client, and um, he had a massive gap of um, time lost. He um, basically, I bought him some rum and coke. I think he ran out of running out of coke. Um, it's about his shopping. Um, it's only a bottle of. He well, he said he he said he drank the rest of his coke, so fine with it, and he drank it throughout the day. But he finished off the bottle, and from about eight o'clock in the evening until two in the morning, he had no recollection of what happened to him, and he found himself in his bed with his um, with his clothes on, and he checked the next day, and there's an entry in his sort of this care this care folder that um, paramedics were called or something. Because he was in his, that's what he, he that's what he claimed that the paramedics were called. But he he couldn't explain why he was in his bed and he had no memory. Um, the chaps needs to be dressed by somebody else. Basically, he can, I mean, he can dress, partially dress himself, but he's in wheelchair bound. So, um, so he'd have a great difficulty getting fully fully dressing himself. So he wouldn't have. Um, it'd be very strange for him to have got into his bed without a without getting changed for his sort of night clothes or whatever. So yeah, I thought that was interesting, so that's unexplained. Um, um, and then like I say, I mentioned about this, what the client said about some low low humming. He thought maybe it's a train distance, it could be. It could be a boat moving by. But he heard it at one point, and then he said, um, can you hear it? And I was like, no, well, I can't really hear it. And I was listening to what potential noises. And, and like I say, I wasn't sort of jumping to any conclusions. Yeah, sure, it's going to be something sort of paranormal and out there. Um, but there wasn't anything that was particularly matching it. I said, oh, is it sure it's not the TV downstairs? And he said, no, no. And then he sort of heard it again later, and I thought that was sort of an odd, an odd thing. And then just me noticing something up in the sky. I was staring at the stars anyway, and something had these, like, small lights, and it formed a kind of um, isosceles-type uh, triangle in shape. And I don't know any star systems that look like that, so I'm going to look it up later, sort of, you know, see if it matches, see if it's something real, or if it's just, um, I can just uh, basically explain it away. Anyway, this is Pizzi signing off, and thanks for listening, and uh, speak to you soon.